Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So I know I said that the next video would be on the 76 but we're actually going to talk about the Patriot today. Picked up the X1N last year. Mars was there, he did not want to buy of it. So I pretty much drove down to Patriots headquarters, picked up the trailer and drove all the way back to Townsville with it. So it was a really good comparison to see how it tows. It obviously sits really nicely behind the vehicle so it's not a wind drag or anything like that. And the main differences between the X1N and the X2, which is their older model that I had a few years before, is this has full airbags on top of the Cruise Master suspension that is in it. And that's really handy because you can level out the camp trailer when you're off road. You don't have to worry about making sure you have level ground. Your doors fold down and use them as tables. So when the trailer is on uneven ground, it makes it quite difficult to use them as tables. So the airbag system is really handy for that. I don't find that it's restricted in its travel or articulation off road due to the airbags. Another big difference is the storage. There's so much more storage in this trailer. You can keep the 76 nice and lightweight for daily driving and have the trailer completely loaded for camping and you don't have to unpack, pack, unpack, or have unnecessary weight in the wagon. Normally when I tell people it's amazing, it has heaps of storage, people are like, okay, but so does the box trailer. And look, yes, if you are just chasing a trailer to throw some shit in, 100% box trailer. But I lived with a flatbed steel tray for years, and I don't miss strapping things down. I don't miss having to use ratchet straps and tie down nets. I don't miss it at all. For a bit of background, I'm somebody that never understood why you would tow a camp trailer. Why would anybody get a camp trailer? Just skip straight to motorhome if that's what you want to do. I said if I ever owned a trailer, it would have to keep up with me off-road. It couldn't slow me down. It couldn't be less capable than my vehicle. It couldn't hold me back from doing things. I don't find that worth it. I'd rather go without. And this trailer, it doesn't hold me back. It's more capable than my leaf spring car. It handles all the ruts well. It follows the vehicle really well off-road. The majority of my off-roading and camping is on the beach. The wheelbase is not that different to what the 75 is, so it does sort of fall into the ruts really nicely and it'd be lightweight. I think when we go camping and when we went to Fink, it was about 1.2 tons, but that was completely loaded for, yeah, like two weeks away. Okay, let's turn some lights on. All the storage boxes have these LED light strips, which are just controlled up here. Accessories turns on all your gauges here. Turning the blower on, that's your, obviously your air compressor. So you can see we've got 31 psi in each airbag. So we can go up and then and underneath the tray, you'll be able to see the ride height markers. Line them up with the top of the tire and there's two. So you've got sort of a reference point is pretty, pretty handy. So this is the Red Arc management system. We can see the battery charge as well as estimated days left. That's all your imports, that's all your amps, sort of what I guess is coming in and out of the batteries. This is the Dometic. I really like the Dometic cooktop that comes with the X1N. It works really well. The burners don't blow out and yeah, just easy to clean. It's nice and compact. The igniter works really well. And yeah, it just gives you a second option to the Weber. So we can have two lots of food going at different times. I can have a pot on here, meat cooking on the Weber. I keep the induction cooktop underneath. Having the induction cooktop, I guess, gives you the option of not having to run gas. The induction cooktop, I do have to run off the Enerdrive system in my vehicle because it is 2000 watt. <laughs> I'd have to say the only thing I dislike about this system is that when you open these, they cover whatever you have here. So the kitchen stuff is all sort of on this one side. The Weber swings out from the front here. There's a fridge and a sink here. look this might just be my fridge but this rubber is quite thick um, and it doesn't drag on this fridge when it comes out so the seal is very thick so this is the kitchen so this is where I just keep plates some cutlery I've got more cutlery in this drawer which slides underneath and then obviously the kitchen sink. Little bung here, there is a hose 
that attaches here so you can drain the water away from where you're going to be standing and there's a little leg that slots in here to sort of brace that up if you're going to be having it out for long periods of time. It is a, quite a long draw. <laughs> The only thing that I would say about this that I'm not a super big fan of, when the awning is out, it comes to about here, the pole, which you gotta like shimmy <laughs> to get around this when it's all the way out. But huge, huge fan of this thing. I don't know what it is about just being able to turn on a tap off-road and have running water. Pretty handy, pretty cool to be able to wash hands. It does chew through water a lot. Huge tank, but pressure from the water pump is a lot. And it's not always, I guess, what you need to sort of just rinse your hands off. We did run out of water out camping at Fink. That was first trip with the trailer and we didn't really know all of these things. We're a little bit more aware of it, so you can half turn the tap on to slow the flow of water down a little bit. And I will show you guys the Weber. So the Weber is on a little swing out arm. So that's sort of where the Weber sits in relation to, I guess, the entire kitchen area. In the front bowl, keep a spare jerry can. The Weber away, you can kind of see that there's just this like empty space up here. I can't pile too much else on top of the Weber, so it does kind of leave this unused space up the top there. And I do not like unused space. <laughs> the sun is going down, but that's okay because we get a beautiful sunset. The spare tire is on the rear. It has a swing out arm. So those are our camp chairs and Mars's bed, but you can see that there is just a huge amount of storage. And you've got your LED strip light as well. This section is probably one of my favorite and one of the biggest changes I noticed from the X2. It is just so much better laid out. It's a big open area, it's not divided, which just gives you flexibility. And people are like, oh, it's just a bigger empty open space. And it's like, yeah, but, <laughs> There's so many different things that we use this trailer for and carry that I don't need unique spaces for everything. I need big open possibility spaces. This area is just a possibility. The drawers, same thing. Cutouts on the side. You can make them as small or as large as you like. However you want to make it, you can make it and everyone's will be different. That's what I like about it. I do see a lot of trailers now where, you know, there's a, a little holder for your plates and a little holder for your cutlery, a little spot for everything, which is great if you want to live exactly that way and how you pack your trailer is kind of dictated by the trailer itself rather than do what you want. <laughs> I'm able to change it depending on what we're using the trailer for. And then there's also a slot up here. That's normally where the pole for the fridge slide out kitchen sits as well. That normally lives up there. Oh yeah, I really like the back. It is, it is my favorite. These little bins down here, that's where I put all Mars's toys normally. And the water can drain out of it really easily. And also, oh, huge thing, I hate the color orange. No offense to any Rangers out there, but it is not a color that I enjoy. So the fact that these are clear, oh, I've done the same on the 75 where I've actually gotten rid of all the orange lenses and they're all clear. I like this. This is nice. So that's the back. Look at this sunset. Okay, the final side, again, more storage. Love it. A big open storage area. All our clothes bags are going here, camera gear, anything that we're charging because this is where the Red Arc inverter is and that's actually what's running my lights at the moment. <laughs> so I've got them coming off the Red Arc. Anything that I sort of don't want to be squashed or wrecked, I want to be able to easily get it. There's no chance we're getting dirty with anything else. So that's where I keep all that sort of stuff. I can put all my camera gear up here. It's not going to get, you know, thrown on the ground or lost or anything. It's all kind of safe and it's right near the inverter. What are you doing? What are you doing? Want to pop you? Um, 
So the tables, as you can see, can hold one Mardi Gras. Wait there, sit down. So they have a rating of 20 kilos, Mars is 16 kilos, 17 on a fat day, so he's fine. <laughs> okay, you can hop down now. That is all. Oh, you can stay up there, okay. So we'll do the other side. The other side has the shower. As I've said before, it's great because this trailer allows you to change whatever. If you don't need a shower, if there's no need, then it completely dismounts and you don't have to have a shower there. You can put a different shower there if you like. <laughs> Nothing is hard set, I like it. There's a secondary gas bottle in there at the moment and then up the top is all the stuff to run the shower. This again is just an overflow of storage. Anything that I can't fit anywhere else can sort of fit in here. Up here is where I keep the hose. I can attach this straight on to my tap here and you can have pressurized water and you've got a hose. In these bags is everything for the shower. The gas fitting, gas onto here, water onto there. You can have two separate water outlets. So normally I run one hose, goes to the sink, which is behind here. This hose comes all the way through. It's able to go onto this adapter. I did buy this adapter from Bunnings. It doesn't come with the shower. Normally it would just be straight onto here. It's good to be able to run the hot water to the sink, the hot water to the shower at the same time. So that would go onto there. There's on offs for the taps. This shower was probably not the best idea for us when we went to the Northern Territory. It uses a lot of water. Obviously there's burners inside of these types of showers. They use gas. They take a while for the water to actually heat up because they're running through a heap of burners. But it was negative five. Let me just say it was negative five in the Northern Territory. It was cold. <laughs> So we were chewing gas, we were chewing a heap of water or for a hot shower. It was, in my opinion, not efficient and I probably wouldn't do that again. Obviously when we go camping on the beach in Townsville, it's hot. So we don't use the hot water for showering. Hot water for the sink, yes, and hot water to do dishes and things like that, really handy. If you're just doing a day trip somewhere really cold, this would be fine. But I'm so glad we had it. So glad I could have a hot shower. <laughs> These two front boxes, this one on the right is where the gas bottle lives. So it's strapped down in there. This one is empty. There is options for things, but that's normally where the garbage goes. And I sort of just hang the bag over here. One of the coolest features of the X1N is the Exo Rack, which is this racking system that the Dometic rooftop tent is bolted to. It can very easily be unbolted. And then you can pretty much use this rack to mount whatever you need, which is super handy when you don't want to put a roof rack on your nice wagon and you own a ute and don't want to jack the canopy off in order to go pick up awkward stuff. Um, there's a rack here. You can sort of see how the rooftop tent is mounted. There's little twist uh, bolts that you can quickly undo and the whole rooftop tent lifts off that exo rack. Probably the only two things that are not set up here at the moment are the rooftop tent and the awning. The awning is a P-Core awning. I will include some clips from one of our track days, me setting up the awning real quickly. It's something I can do completely by myself. I don't need any assistance at all. That's a huge plus. guys this final pole but this is a short pole and when the spare tire arm is closed you can slot this into this little bracket and then when you open the tire arm it actually pushes this arm and holds it out so I actually like that idea a lot more because the old trailer had a super peg awning and someone would have to stand there like holding tension on that because of all of this got weight on it. So someone kind of has to stand there and hold that. So I do like this idea a lot better. Another thing that's really cool is it has these little pockets so that your drawstrings, you know, can go back in the pocket. They've got Velcro. Um, so there's drawstrings on each pole and then one in between, which can be good to angle the centers down so the water runs off. But this is a little latch that holds the bracket down. 
<laughs> this holds the bracket that the awning is mounted to. So that comes up and it's on gas struts. These are the brackets here that lift the awning up and down. As you can see, there's a little gas strut. And then this is a fold out like a brace. It lives up there when you want to fold it back down. So the legs are actually magnetic and there's a little pull cord here that hangs down on all of the legs. Uh, and you can use that to pull the leg out, but it does magnet back up. There's also this dimmable light here, which is a touch and goes brighter, dimmer. It's all controlled via this little button here. The most important thing camping for me is I don't want to stress. I work two jobs plus social media. I do not have spare time to be stressing. I want to be able to Friday afternoon just hook up the trailer and go and that's what we've been able to do with this trailer because I don't have to pack a car anymore. There's no more days of me packing down a ute tray. Like it was so stressful doing that. This is amazing. It gives you more time to get camping it's quick to set up everything's already sorted no pulling tubs out of my tray anymore you can just get into your camp chair by the fire so much quicker and easier with less stress and you don't have to worry about packing and unpacking so that's the biggest benefit for me and yeah it's not a cheap trailer it is a very high quality trailer that is made in australia and we all know the costs of things made in australia it's really cool there's so many trades so many australian trades that work on this trailer obviously there's a heap of different trailers out there it's not necessarily who's better than the rest it's more which one suits your lifestyle better i highly doubt there's anyone out there that has a similar lifestyle to myself and it will be the same for you guys out there as well so this i believe is one of the most versatile trailers available i feel like i've said trailer too many times and now it sounds really weird <laughs> The next trip we'll be doing in the trailer is to Carnage at the end of this month, so stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited. I think it's gonna be a little bit cold. Okay, final sign off for this video. Our truck's about to go past. We're waiting. There's so many birds here. There is a very real chance that I'm about to get pooped on. Okay, so if you jump over to the Patriot Campers YouTube channel, they actually have a video on the updated 2022 X1N, which actually addresses a heap of concerns that I listed in this video already. So it means that they're listening to the people using their trailers and they're addressing common issues and common concerns that people have. So they've done things like put a shelf in the front section and they've put support mounts for the awning. You would have seen in the NT video, uh, we broke one of the little latches holding the awning down. So they put little supports underneath the awning because obviously it's a lot of weight just sort of hanging there. So they've supported that and that's all updated in the 2022 model. So it's just cool. It's cool that they're constantly changing and adapting and they're not, you know, sitting back and saying, we've got a perfect product. They are listening, they're making changes and I love that in any brand. <laughs> We're actually taking the trailer again tomorrow to go do more testing. So. Uh, it's a, just a good trailer. We use it an equal amount for work as we do for play. So it's it's a very versatile trailer. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know any questions that you have. Leave them down in the comments section. Follow me on Instagram. You can keep up to date there because I have Instagram back now. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.